Hello guys and welcome to another David Samalata. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to test your alternator using a $4 device, how to use that same device to test your battery. Also, I wanna show you how to open up your trunk in a Chrysler 300, um, even if your battery is dead or you don't have no battery inside. I also wanna talk about how you could actually drive home on a dead battery using another device. And I'm also going to be using a check engine uh, light scanner to actually read the voltage output of the battery and the alternator at the same time. So without no further ado, uh, let's get started. Before we begin, I just want to say I have problems with my alternator again. I recently replaced the brushes, but I chipped out and did not replace the voltage regulator. But now I see that was the mistake because yes, the brushes was bad last time and replaced them for a reason. But as soon as I replaced the brushes and I installed the alternator, as I was testing it, I could see there were some fluctuations in the voltage. So voltage regulator has basically went out. So it's providing like a very, very tiny little charge. It does not know how to regulate. However, if I'm just revving the RPMs like very high, then it's charging like almost like 14 volts. So that's why like I know it is bad because I tested everything. But anyways, let's take a look. Hey guys, I don't have no battery inside my Chrysler 300, but I need to put a battery in, and this is an electronic trunk lid. So how do you get it open with having no battery there? Well, let me show you. First of all, you're going to need something like this and pop your hood open. Then you're gonna need to find a positive terminal, which is right here, and you need to ground it, which we do have ground right here remain the same we're gonna turn this to on so now we're giving it to 12.9 volts let's see if we could pump the trunk we are getting a reading so there it is the trunk was actually able to pop up with battery disconnected right here so all we got to do is basically reconnect the battery and now we're going to test the fact uh, see if it's actually a good charge so this was the battery that was actually inside of my vehicle and it, wa it went completely dead. But basically the battery light did not come on until the battery was dead. So even though my alternator was no longer, you know, giving a charge, it did not come up. So here's why. Let me show you why that is with my little tester that tests the alternator output, which will actually show you your vehicle don't need to be connected to be showing you regular alternator output so basically it's giving me right now even though it's fully charged it's giving me a low output of 13 volts so with this type of reading which happens to be an alternator type of reading uh it lets me know that hey it's still charging the battery you know that's what this lets this unit know so it lets the computer inside know the same thing this is why the battery light will not come on until you reach a much lower level. I mean, you're probably going to be like right below the 12 volt range, which actually when it actually came on for me. So let's test this again. Boom. As you can see, it comes up all the way to the low 13 volts. So now we need to install this battery. So anyways, this here is a little tube for lead acid batteries, needs to be plugged in to this area right here. So it's now plugged in. This piece looks to me like it's bent, kind of weird, I did not bend it, but you know, there it is. So basically here's the positive terminal. Now for this one, it's a little tricky, like this thing is already messing up and it's actually spinning. So we're going to be dealing with that. But the main thing I wanna, I wanna show you is, um, actually, let's see, I have power actually going out to the vehicle now. So I actually wanna see what the power output is right now. So it's basically just uh, giving me a test of the battery uh, currently which is uh, just good with everything connected. So if I remove the negative, 
still same thing so it seems like this battery is draining fairly quickly when I tested it inside and I wasn't filming actually it showed, it showed that it was 13.5 volts so it went to 13 volts and very quickly dropped down to 12.5 volts um, that's not good that's a very quick drop so this battery is 2017 so maybe it's uh it's seen better days but still though it should still be fine so now that we have everything tidied up let's start the vehicle before we start the vehicle uh as you could see right now it's showing 12.7 volts reading and uh, that's because we are plugged up uh, correctly so it is showing that mark so here's what I'm trying to test okay while I have my seats down and everything I'm going to remove this negative connector right here just gonna remove it so pretending that this you know battery is completely dead I'm gonna go ahead and lower this down shut the trunk Now, as you can see, we don't have no reading, even though everything has remained the same. We're gonna turn this to on. So now we're giving it to 12.9 volts. Let's see if we could pump the trunk. We are getting a reading. So there it is. The trunk was actually able to pop up with battery disconnected right here. So all we gotta do is basically reconnect the battery. And now we're going to test the fact to uh, see if it's actually a good charge. Before we start the car, we're going to go ahead and actually remove everything here. Guys, this here saved me because yesterday I was in that situation where I came to a post office and my vehicle battery was completely dead. I actually drove home by plugging this thing up giving my battery some juice and driving it home if you guys need some kind of jump and carry type of pack i will leave a link for this in the description below so feel free to check it out i'm going to also leave it uh, for some smaller type of units now this is a little bit more professional those are much cheaper the smaller ones and i guess pick and choose what you want to have but this here is proven time and time again to basically you know start up vehicles and stuff like that because this is actually what professionals use now let's uh test the trunk button trunk button is now working and what i like to do is i like to carry this jump pack right here and i like to carry my alternator tester which we will be testing in a few seconds so i'm going to move this out of the way and put this right here for now let's test the battery once again to get a reading before we actually start the vehicle up and see what it does so now uh even 12.5 does not light up that's kind of crazy this battery went from from very good to worse and worse worse i mean it almost looks like there's a, a bad cell i mean there's a good possibility that this battery is just bad so we probably have like a dead cell in it or something this is why the battery light came on my alternator might be good so we could find out that fact uh through how much is charging because i could actually see how much charge we're gonna have so right now the reading is currently the green kind of flashes but it pretty much goes to 12 volt right away and uh, well green green is actually showing up so 12.5 showing up good because we are getting a correct battery reading right now so we're getting 12.5 volts which is good let's start it so let's go ahead and start it up so there is no battery icon on as you could clearly see but there is um a handbrake that's pretty much applied um i do want to show you something else while i'm here but after we test the charge of the alternator so now let's observe the charging of the alternator see how much it's outputting we are not getting any output of the alternator as you could see it's basically not charging it any i'm going to have to actually plug in one of my tools that checks alternator and show you what it outputs so i said i want to show you something inside of the vehicle and while I remember this, I'm going to go ahead and do so. 
Let me show you, there's a problem that these Chryslers will have. The vehicle will not start up. And here's how you start it up, actually. So wa watch my key. I think you could actually see what's going on. So watch. Look at that. We're getting no start. We're getting no start again. We'll twist the key back. We're getting no start. We're getting no start. But right, watch this. See, started up just fine. And that is because when you twist the key too far, there's a problem with this uh, you know, key system, this uh, tumbler. It might be electrical, but mainly it's like a mechanical tumbler. They got plastic parts inside. They get worn out. And when you twist the key too far, it will now no longer charge the vehicle up. So you have to actually twist the key forward, like just a little by little. And then when it, you hear it's catching, just leave it at that type of a position. And of course the starter will do its thing and it's gonna start right up. So what's next? So next guys, I'm going to plug in one of my scanners into this vehicle and I will attempt to test the alternator charge. See where it takes us. Um, see what kind of output we're actually getting because from what I could see, it's not even outputting 13 volts pretty much. So uh, the battery is showing right at about 12.5. So it might be giving it some charge, but not enough. So you might ask, well, what's the problem and what is the problem to the, what is the solution to the problem? Well, recently, if you watched one of my videos, I actually changed the brushes. I bought original brushes and I installed them. Not only that, I actually took the old brushes, I removed them and I resoldered them for next time that I may potentially have this issue. So I'm going to have new brushes to install. Well, when I actually installed those brushes back, I noticed that the vehicle was charging, but it was like so-so, you know, the charge was like not constant, like it was pretty bad. And it lasted a while. Um, I mean, shoot, like it probably lasted almost a year because I can't remember like last I did it, it was like still summertime. So now it's pretty much winter time. So I believe the brushes are fine. I don't drive this vehicle that far or that often to really have the brushes wear out on me. Uh, it actually, you know, sits a lot. So I believe what has happened is the voltage regulator actually died. So that being said, that's a pretty big job trying to remove the alternator, trying to change all that stuff out. So I recommend changing voltage regulator and the brushes at the same time, because you really don't want to do this job twice. And besides the voltage regulator does not cost that much. The cost of the brushes might cost like 20 bucks, but together with the voltage regulator, maybe a hundred bucks, you know, but here's the thing in the description below, I'm going to include the link to the brushes and to the voltage regulator as I did last time in the video. So if you need that kind of stuff, you could at least check out what you need, click on it, see what price this is right for you. Because for me to get a new alternator for this vehicle, it's going to cost right around $300, might even more. So that's like not for a branded one, but if I'm going to go for a dealer, it's probably going to cost 500 bucks. So I'm not about to spend 500 bucks on the alternator. $20 fix, $50 fix, $100 fix, sure. But I'm always going to take the cheapest approach first, try that out and see what sticks. But definitely, I don't like doing a job twice and neither should you. Hi hey guys, in this video, which is the continuation of another video, we need to plug it in an OBD2 port. So OBD2 port on the Chrysler 300 is located right there. So, we need to put the key to the second position and we need to basically diagnose the vehicle. So, we could do like a regular generic scan or we could do an original scan that has to do with the vehicle. In this video, there's a good chance I'm going to be scanning it using two different computers. Last time I tested um, Zurich 13 from Harbor Tools and Freight that was able to test the alternator, but the options in that specific scanner is very confusing. So I want to see if this is actually a little bit easier to use. 
So right now it tells me there's no fault codes. Of course there's not, we don't have no check engine light on. But that being said, let's go ahead and actually turn the vehicle on. We're gonna escape and we're basically going to try to see if you could scan this vehicle. So we have a Chrysler. We're gonna go ahead and select it and see like what this can tell me. So we have a system scan here. Let's do an automatic set for now. Okay, so we could check the engine, TCM, anti-like black brake controller, and occupant restraint control. Okay, let's go ahead and actually click on engine and see what other options that it gives me. Maybe it's gonna give me something. So we have a data stream and we have trouble codes. Let's see what the data stream has. We have, this is exactly like what I'm look, you know, what I was looking for. So it's giving me all of these different things here, all the menus. So we're gonna hit escape. So we have the voltage here. So that's the one we selected. So you could see at which voltage we're operating. And let's see. I guess I could have selected all of them and I was just like seeing every single reading here at once, but we you know, needed only one. So it's showing 11 point 89, you know, 86 or so fluctuating. So it's getting somewhat of a charge. Let's see if I try to rev RPMs. Look, see now it's charging a little bit more as I'm revving. So it is getting charged. The brushes are working, but the voltage regulator, that's the issue is the way I'm seeing it. So let's see right now the lights are obviously on. Oh no, actually off. The lights are actually off. So let's see if I go to automatic which is actually going to turn the lights on because uh, normally they're on so it's staying a little bit above 12 so which tells me i might be able to drive it for a little bit until you know it dies so if i turn the lights off it still you know doesn't really really improve things so we're 12 or a little bit under all above so this means that driving like this that battery was just die so i'm actually going to continue driving like this until i buy the voltage regulator hey guys my voltage regulator has come in i'm going to be making a video of the installation process and when i actually make the video i'm going to leave a link in the description below for that video so if you're looking to install the voltage regulator and want to know how to do it please check out that video well anyways guys this video has came to an end thank you so much for watching take care of yourself and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.